Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this whole Bitcoin SV thing just keeps getting more and more weird. Now, uh, this is from Tian Fury at F-O-U-R-I-E-T-I-A-A-N, breaking SBI virtual currencies delist Bitcoin Cash in response to Binance's Bitcoin SV delisting. Now folks, let me tell you what I'm starting to pick up here. It, this is me talking, um, but I, what I, here's what what I'm starting to believe. I believe that you now back, and I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, I can go ahead. Well, I'll show you in a second when all of this fighting between Craig Wright and um, Craig Wright is the Bitcoin SV guy, and then you've got Roger Ver, who's the Bitcoin Cash guy. Well. Guys like myself, for, for since before that even began, we've talked about how all these Bitcoin forks, it's just mass confusion. It's a big nightmare. Well, uh, as Anthony Pompliano says, there's only one original or something to that effect, and that is Bitcoin. Well, I agree. As far as investing, I would never touch any of these forks of, of Bitcoin. Well, I believe that the invet the, the heavy the big Bitcoin investors, Bitcoin, not fork stuff. I believe the big Bitcoin investors have seen all of this fork stuff as the same nightmare that I view it in in terms of how it waters down the whole thing, it makes it sound silly. And I believe that once this infighting began to happen between Roger Ver and Craig Wright, and they started lobbying saying, I, I'm gonna destroy you, or whoever said that kind of thing. Um, I believe that the Bitcoin, the big Bitcoin investors have finally had enough. And I believe more importantly that they know that this threatens their investment because it, it makes it all look like a bunch of silliness. So I believe what, what CZ Binance did, I believe he's one of those Bitcoin guys, maybe not necessarily, um, a huge Bitcoin guy. But he knows it's going to hurt the industry overall if they let this continue to go on. So I believe that's why the CEO of Binance did this. And I believe that SBI Virtual Currencies said, okay, well, as long as we're doing um, the uh, Bitcoin SV, let's just start getting rid of all of these forks, delisting all the forks. And they'll eventually go away is what, is what I believe the thinking is. Um, and so if you keep looking, you keep going along, Extra Hardcore said this. Will the Bitcoin for, will the Bitcoin fork delisting set a precedent for future BTC forks? Um, and then he gives uh, a a bunch of uh, a bunch of different choices here. And the one winning is don't fork with BTC. In other words, the Bitcoin people they don't want any more forks off of BTC. And it waters down the whole thing and just makes it all appear silly. And I believe that, that the investors as well as the people behind it all really do believe that that it's not in their interest and i think they're right to not have all this forks and all this it, it really just creates a weird impression to everybody i think so next from crypto utility guy at utility guy seven sent sent me this and this kind of confused me because i showed you a tweet from this account earlier and i thought that this was not the real craig right i thought it was a spoof account well this article is looking at the same account and saying that it's act that Craig Wright's uh, account was terminated by Twitter and now it's come back. I still believe this has to be, as I read through these tweets, except for one or two of them, it didn't sound like Craig Wright to me. Um, so I still believe that this is a spoof account and I think that these guys were fooled. Correct me if I'm wrong though. Craig Wright's sarcastic response, boycott Binance, not my fault, please return BSV to Binance. Um, this is, let's see, it shows him as having 370 followers and that he joined in April. I believe it's gotta be a spoof account. 
Um, Dr. Craig Wright is saying that this is him. Binance is playing God, a disgusting show of arrogance from an opponent to decentralization. Anyone who supports cryptocurrency should boycott Binance for this abuse of power. Now, that sounds like Craig Wright. Um, and I'm looking at this handle to see pro, pro false dust. Okay. The next one, let's see. Um, same thing. I did not attempt to sue Hodel not. My nephew was using the computer. Please add BSV back to Binance. That's what I showed you this morning. That does not sound like Craig Wright to me because he doesn't have an ounce of humility in his bones from everything I've ever read about the guy. And it's not in his character to say please to Binance. That, that doesn't make, and this does not sync with this if you're Craig Wright. And then he says, it's time to tell the truth. I am not Satoshi. Please add BSV back to Binance CC. All right, so that really doesn't sound like Craig Wright. He's not the type that just backs down. Even if he's joking, he doesn't really joke from what I've seen. That sells it. I'm selling my BNB. You have messed with the wrong guy. That sounds more like Craig Wright. But these back and forth, this just sounds like a spoof account. I think this article got it wrong. But next, John McAfee decided to weigh in, which I always find hilarious. I love him. It's my considered opinion that BSV is using Craig Wright's bogus claim to be Satoshi as a means to fraudulently increase their price. God bless CZ Binance for having the courage to delist him. Um, and next, this is something that I said this morning. And this is when, when all this came up, this is kind of what I was saying. I couldn't believe it when I first saw the Bitcoin SV and the Bitcoin Cash guys fighting. This guy saying, saying he would destroy that guy, thus acknowledging that proof of work can be centrally controlled. Bitcoin investors, at the time I said this, Bitcoin investors are hearing all of this. And I couldn't believe that these guys were so embroiled in this little battle that they didn't realize they were telling the investor world proof of work is not decentralized because we're claiming we can control it with our hashing power. So, and then I said, looks like the Bitcoin Illuminati had enough. And for those of you that like that term, I made it up and I was really just joking, okay? I don't think there's a Bitcoin Illuminati yet. <laughs> Next from uh, Michael at BAL5 links, Ripple gearing up for major expansion of X, XRP powered X Rapid. Now, this is interesting because this is um, Ashish Gurla says Ripple's senior vice president of product Ashish Gurla says Ripple will soon launch a major expansion of its XRP based cross border payment solution X Rapid. Um, he was doing an Ask Me Anything on YouTube. He says, on-demand liquidity is available today in Mexico and the Philippines. So far, the positive responses from our customers in these two countries have been overwhelming. But we are working on the next set of destinations, which we will be announcing in hopefully short order here. I know our product teams and marketing and engineering teams are working hard to light up those next set of destinations so that we can provide our customers with increased choice in terms of global expansion. The big, uh, that down here, we have plans for the Middle East. We have plans for Canada imminently. But I think the really exciting thing that X Rapid and Ripple brings is, is it actually brings access to new markets that perhaps aren't actually accessible now. It's two countries today. It could be 10 before the middle of the year. And what stops it from becoming more any more than that XRP has an advantage in that it is built specifically for payments. And so it settles in a matter of seconds. So that question that you had earlier about volatility, not an issue when using XRP, XRP for cross-border payments. The cost of sending XRP is just a fraction of a few pennies. And the third reason is that it's extremely scalable. You can do thousands of transactions per second using XRP. And all those reasons make it really well suited, suited for cross-border payments. You can beam YouTube to the space station. You can actually send emails with just a few clicks and anyone around the world can get it. But sending money, I mean, that is a painful experience. If you've sent a bank wire or you've actually tried to wire money around the world, you know that it's just faster probably to just get that money, get on a plane and get it to your destination. The crazy thing about payments today in 2019 is that if you want to send, send money globally, it really hasn't changed since the 1960s, but the world has evolved. There needs to be corresponding modern day, a modern day way of sending money. 
And that's what we're really after with Ripple and RippleNet. Wow, what a great exchange. Okay, King Solomon sent this to me. BNY Mellon becoming custodians of digital assets. Brad called it. BNY plus Volante RippleNet sidebar. Um, so anyway, I'm not going into this article. That kind of speaks for itself. BNY Mellon, remember, um, is BNY Mellon is um, is the bank of the family, the Mellon family. The guy, Mel, the what was his name? Matthew Mellon is the one that died owning like a billion dollars worth of XRP. And there's another connection. Don't quote me on this, but I swear that I heard this someone. I heard this somewhere. I heard from someone that Brad Garlinghouse's, I believe his daughter, is married to one of these people at this bank, BNY Mellon. That could be wrong, but I, I could swear that I heard that from somewhere. Please uh, let me know if that's true or not true. I'd like to know. Um, next, Sean Michael at Michaels underscore. Mr. sent me this. U.S. Bank hires a formal Ripple XRP partner. Will they integrate? Um, and this is the article he sent. U.S. Bank announced a few hours ago that it has hired Derek White, a former employee at BBVA, one of Ripple's leading partners. The hiring of White could see U.S. Bank adopt Ripple Technologies and XRP for cross-border transactions. Um, U.S. Bank announced today that the company has hired veteran digital leader and innovator Derek White as chief digital officer responsible for leading the company's newly combined digital team. White will report to U.S. Bank Chairman, President, and CEO Andy Sasiri and be a member of the company's managing committee. Let me see if there's anything. It says he's a proven global track record as a digital innovator in banking. He and his team will be instrumental in deepening our commitment to pro provide our retail and institutional customers with the capabilities that make it easier and better to bank with U.S. Bank. Nice. That's big, folks. All right. Uh, this from Crypto Lab. Um, I've promised that I'm going to keep showing you some of these charts. Just because I show you these charts does not mean that I necessarily agree with them. It just means that I want to show you uh, some ideas from the from some of the people that are into charting and know this part of the business. And so I'm showing it to you. Doesn't mean that I'm saying, oh, this see, this is what it means. This is what's going to happen. Um, anyway. I can confirm technically, almost on all indicators, that this thing is about to skyrocket soon. I've already shared a number of indicators in my previous TA tweets on XRP. On this one, I show the monthly stochastic RSI's bullish cross over, over after a double bottom. And that's what he's showing right here. And so I just wanted to show it to you. And finally, one of my favorite quotes of all time from Mike Tyson. So true. Everyone has a plan till they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> From Mike Tyson, probably the greatest fighter of all time. I would have loved to seen a fight between him and Muhammad Ali. When Mike Tyson was in his prime, when he was not, Muhammad Ali would have gone the distance and beat him like a drum, in my opinion. But when he was in his prime, it would be interesting to see if Muhammad Ali would have been able to survive that first one minute and 30 seconds because that's about how long most of his fights lasted. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Thanks for listening.